Hey guys, Petra here. If you haven't met me or hung out with me before, literally today, uh, my work is all about helping build a sustainable body. So exercise the way we normally do it actually leads to a lot of injuries for a lot of people. We know we need movement, we know we need more movement. I'm gonna teach you how to move better so that your body works better for longer. One of the core movement skills that is gonna help you with this is learning how to hang and swing and climb because these types of movements are missing from most people's lives. And that means our arms don't go above our heads very often, our pulling muscles don't get used very well. Uh, there's just a whole carry on that comes as a result of not having these movements in our lives. And a big one um, is actually our breathing because all of the muscles in the shoulder girdle that get all hunched over in front of computers, those are also the muscles that give our heart and lungs room to move and do their thing. So hanging and climbing and swinging, that whole category of movement is huge for sustainability. One of the things you need in order to hang is a hanging bar. Um, there are some alternatives, but I really recommend having something and having something close at hand because if you have to walk to hang, you're gonna do it less, you just are. And accumulating time is useful when it comes to bodies because that's what creates change and that's what gives us the goods. You know, it doesn't do your body much good to hang once a week or once a month. You gotta do it every day for the, the best benefits. As you can see, we literally have a tree branch hanging with rope from our garage beams. This does not have to be complicated, although you can make it as elaborate as you want to. Uh, other things to think about is you probably want to have the ability to have your feet on the ground somewhere near your hanging bar because you are going to find that your hands are the weakest link when it comes to hanging. And if you want to start creating more time in that position, you're going to have to deload. You're going to have to take off weight. And that is most easily done by simply having your feet on the ground. One of the many things that hanging does is it makes your tendons and connective tissue stronger. And the way connective tissue works is you want to build up strength gradually. If you overload it and don't give it time, it tends to uh, get injured. So you want to give yourself lots of lower loads, higher frequencies, and that's going to help you hang in a more sustainable fashion. When it comes to hanging technique, um, it's, kind of, it's kind of wide open. There's a lot you can do, but there are a few good things to think about. So first of all, and probably the big one, is most of us are limited in our shoulder mobility. At a point that's usually right about here, most of us no longer have stuff happening in our shoulders, and we have to compensate for that by lifting our ribs up. So you're gonna see a lot of people hanging like this. What is not awesome about that is that this spine movement, first of all, it's not a shoulder movement. So you're not doing as much for your shoulders if you're hanging with your ribs out here. Second of all, your spine isn't really made to work instead of your shoulder. Your spine is supposed to do what spines do. So if your spine is doing what your shoulder does all the time, it's going to typically lead to... Um, to overloads and stresses in places where you don't want them. So the easy fix for that is just to hang with your hands in front of you for now. And you can do that with your feet on the ground pretty easily, or you can do it with your feet in the air just by kind of curling yourself up. So the bonus for that is it's a great core workout. The real fix for that is working on your shoulder mobility, which you can start doing with my Joints for Life course or my Take 10 course because I work a lot on shoulder mobility. So I do recommend doing that. But in the meantime, just have your hands out in front of you. And if you feel for your lower ribs, what you should notice is that if you feel the rib edge, it should feel really solidly connected to your torso. So if you kind of have your ribs sticking out and you feel with your hands, you're gonna notice that it almost feels like you could stick your fingers in under there. That's not what you want. You want your ribs to be sunk down and kind of solid, even if it makes your upper body feel a little bit hunchbacked. You can hold your hanging bar in a million ways. It's usually a nice way to start with just your hands in this classic kind of pull-up type position. You can absolutely have your hands facing in the other direction. If you choose to do some pull-ups, uh, this is a nice direction to practice in because it puts your shoulders into what's known as external rotation, 
which is a great position uh, for your shoulder joint. But uh, if you want to progress to pull-ups, this version uses more bicep and the hands facing forward version uses more back and lats. And for most of us, it's our back and our lats that we're missing. So I typically work palm forward, but definitely it's nice for your shoulders to work palm facing back as well. And here is a place where variety is awesome. You wanna give yourself lots of options and explore lots of positions because we're trying to get movement into as many cells as possible. Movement is super specific, so hanging this way is not really gonna transfer that much to hanging this way or hanging this way. You wanna, you wanna do them all. All right, other things to think about here. So yeah, positioning, this is known in move net circles as a front hang, and it's a really nice way to practice your hanging because it uses a lot of shoulders leading into lats, leading into core. Um, especially as you start working on one-handed hanging, it will help you learn core control. So you can start with both hands up there. And again, my feet are on the ground right now. I'm not doing really heavy weights. Uh, but I could take my, my feet up off the ground and see if I could stay in the same position. And what you might find is that you circle around like that, that you rotate. So to work on your lats and core control, what you would want to do here is try to not rotate. And the way you're going to win with that is taking your back hand and pressing the thumb and elbow of the back hand in towards center like that on your hanging bar. And that's going to help you with the counter rotation or the anti-rotation. One thing to kind of consider with hanging is that keeping your hand on the ground is good for accumulating time. It's also good for creating more strength. So you certainly can keep your legs on the ground for as long as feels good to you. But you do also want to start challenging yourself a little bit and maybe picking your feet up off the ground and seeing what that's like for you. And again, here I'm doing that kind of pelvis forward, curling my abs in, keeping my ribs down to compensate for any lack of shoulder mo mobility I might have. And I need a little hand break because hanging is hard even with your feet on the ground. As you start taking your feet up off the ground, there's a lot of fun stuff you can do. So even with your feet on the ground, you could try some side to side swaying. And what's nice about side to side work or, or more movement-y work, I guess, more, more dynamic work, is you're gonna start exposing your shoulders to greater loads and getting them ready to do swinging and brachiation, which is going down the monkey bars. Those are the movements that ultimately are gonna really help reshape and strengthen and um, improve your upper body and the alignment of your upper body much more so than many other shoulder exercises will. So you wanna start getting that swinging sensation um, and practice down. So one of my favorite things to do is with feet off the bar, knees can be bent or straight, you can just start swinging side to side like so. So that's a really nice, um, a nice feeling thing to do. There was the front hang. And if you didn't do front hang, you wanna make sure you do it with both hands um, in front. So take turns to see which hand goes in front. You can absolutely spend lots of time in just a single arm hang. This is a beautiful stretch for the uh, whole entire side of your body on the hanging side. And with your arms in the air is also a good place to work on your breathing. So breathing is a, a lost skill in our society. We do it, but we don't do it well. And so when you're in a leveraged position like hanging, you can really start to maximize your gains by taking big deep breaths, feeling your ribs inflate. So you wanna create movement in your rib cage and then you wanna exhale all of it. And that's gonna help your diaphragm move more, it's gonna help your ribs move more, it's gonna create more mobility overall, more space for your lungs, more awesomeness. Let's take a little break for our hands. Put the palms of your hands together, interlace your fingers, turn your hands inside out and press them in front of you. 
pull your thumbs down and press through the bases of your fingers so that you're not so much a tabletop and you're more of a, an arch or a dome here. Just work out some of that hanging. All right, like that. So that's pretty good. As you get stronger and more dynamic, you can definitely start playing around with bringing your feet to the bar. So that's using a lot more core and it's a pretty nice thing to practice. Definitely a useful skill if you're planning to ever do any kind of tree climbing. The other way you can swing instead of side to side, of course, is forward and back. And that's a really nice thing to practice as well as you start to get more and more able to hang with your feet up off the ground. So that should give you quite a few options to start playing with. Um, the only other thing that I'd recommend paying some attention to is if you hyperextend your, your elbows. So you can see I hyperextend my left. That means that it kind of bends past um, past a straight elbow, you can keep a little mini bend in your elbow. And that's not necessary, but it's a good idea because until you have muscles to support your elbow, uh, if you, if you hyperextend a lot, you're really just hanging out in your connective tissue, which isn't doing you much good muscularly and can be a strain on them. There was one more exercise I wanted to show you. So this is a really good one in terms of building uh, awareness and control of your shoulder blades or your scapula. It's called a scapular pull-up. And what you're gonna do here is you can start by holding on and just letting your shoulders come up towards your ears. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull your shoulder blades down towards your feet. You'll find your head pops up. You can lower down slowly. Slow lowering is a really good idea in hanging. It's called an eccentric contraction, which is one of the better ways to use your muscles. Well, it's really only one of three ways to use your muscles and they're all good, but it gives a lot of benefits. It gives a lot of control, it gives a lot of strength building. So you lower yourself slowly and then you pull yourself back up. Um, so that's a scapular pull up. You can do those in this position as well. So relaxing down and pulling up, relaxing down and pulling up. And again, always remember to do it with both arms in front so that you're getting the best possible distribution of strength building and load. All right, so I'm tapping out. My arms are exhausted. I hope that this made sense to you and that it gives you lots of ideas for your own home hanging practice. One of my favorite things to do is just set a timer for five minutes and come and play around with these variations for about five minutes at a time. It really helps me build up a lot of strength and endurance. So, um, you know, you could do two minutes to start or one minute, whatever works for you, but build up the time uh, slowly as you practice. And really, it's just about getting out there and having fun. I think most people really enjoy hanging. And as you get better and better at it, you'll find you can do some pretty cool stuff on the monkey bars, stuff you couldn't do, um, ever, <laughs> stuff you used to be able to do when you were 12 years old. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. Definitely, um, if you're interested in movement and movement tips, come and check out my website. It's petrafishermovement.com. Uh, sign up for my freebie, which is all about building strong feet, which has very little to do with your hanging in your hands, but it's a great thing to work on as well. And it'll introduce you to more of my work. And uh, hopefully I will see you there, okay? Get in touch anytime. Uh, I love questions and comments and I will see you in the next video. Have a great day.